Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover if performing cardio in conjunction with resistance training will inhibit muscle growth. First we need to define what exactly we mean when referring to cardio. This is actually a fairly difficult training modality to define because all exercise has a cardiorespiratory component to it. Even resistance training requires heart rate and breathing rate to increase. So to use a working definition for this video, let's define cardio as exercise which is intentionally performed to improve endurance performance. This means we aren't referring to a casual walk or cycle, it specifically refers to more high intensity modalities which actually result in cardiorespiratory fitness improvements. This would include exercises such as running, interval training, intense cycling, rowing, and so on. Using this definition, there is a very fine line between what is considered cardio and what is not, but I think we can all relate to where this threshold lies, specifically for us as an individual, and what exercise is not considered cardio. Before getting into the details about how cardio may affect hypertrophy via resistance training, let's first look at the direct effects of cardio on muscle growth. In other words, can cardio itself actually be somewhat hypertrophic? This research review compiled the evidence of cycling training on lower body hypertrophy. It was found that various different cycling protocols actually seem to result in lower body muscle hypertrophy in most instances. However, all the studies included in this analysis were on untrained individuals. This makes it difficult to assess if cycling or other cardio modalities can in fact provide a hypertrophic stimulus for lifting enthusiasts. However, even if cardio is somewhat hypertrophic, it still doesn't compare to resistance training. This meta-analysis compared the effects of aerobic versus resistance training on quadriceps hypertrophy outcomes. As we can see, it was found that overall, resistance training is significantly superior for muscle growth compared with aerobic training like we would expect. So this research suggests that cardio training could potentially be somewhat hypertrophic for less advanced trainees. However, does this have the same effect for advanced lifters or will cardio actually inhibit muscle growth for these trainees? So we know that resistance training is the best form of training to maximize muscle growth. Although, what we really want to know is, does adding cardio into a lifting routine inhibit the muscle growth that we would see if we only did resistance training without cardio? This is quite a difficult question to answer because there are many different variables which can influence the outcomes. Factors such as how much cardio versus resistance training, what cardio methods we use, the timing of each training modality, and so on, will all have an impact on hypertrophy outcomes. Before we get into the details about how endurance training influences hypertrophy, let's first quickly cover how resistance training may influence endurance performance. There seems to be essentially no negative effects of resistance training on aerobic performance. Almost all studies involving concurrent training show no negative outcomes for aerobic ability. In fact, strength and power training have actually been shown to improve endurance performance in some cases. For example, this meta-analysis explored the body of research on the effects of strength and power training on running economy. It was concluded that long-term strength and power training are effectively able to improve submaximal running economy when performed in conjunction with a running program. So we can be quite confident in saying that resistance training isn't going to inhibit endurance performance in any direct way and may even enhance performance. However, we still want to know, is the opposite true? Does aerobic training negatively affect hypertrophy outcomes? Unfortunately, there is no agreed upon consensus about the effects of cardio on hypertrophy. Some evidence shows that it can inhibit hypertrophy, which is known as the interference effect, and some evidence suggests that it has no effect. It seems that the interference effect is more pronounced for anaerobic performance outcomes more so than muscle growth, which is a structural outcome. There is more consistent evidence suggesting that cardio can inhibit maximal strength, power, and speed performance, especially when conducted in close succession to anaerobic training. However, this isn't the topic for this video. We want to know if there is any impact on muscle growth. Let's now look at what the research shows. First, we have this initial meta-analysis published in 2012. This analysis shows that according to the overall body of research, 
concurrent aerobic and resistance training appeared to result in less muscle growth compared with resistance training alone. The difference between concurrent training versus strength training alone was not all that different, but there definitely seemed to be more favorable muscle growth with resistance training alone. However, the paper didn't list the studies used in the statistical analysis, so it couldn't look at the specific design of each individual study. It could possibly be that the concurrent training groups performed less volume of resistance training than the groups performing resistance training alone. These questions should be raised because we now have more recent research which shows different results. First, this research review analyzed the research exploring the effects of concurrent aerobic and resistance training on quadriceps hypertrophy outcomes. In this graph, the white bars show hypertrophy from resistance training alone, and the black bars show hypertrophy from concurrent resistance and aerobic training. As we can see, most studies find no significant difference in quadriceps hypertrophy. In fact, there seems to be a general trend that concurrent training in most cases resulted in slightly superior quadriceps hypertrophy compared with resistance training alone. Furthermore, we can see the individual studies that each of these results were taken from so we can look at the specific training design. I wanted to specifically look at this study in more detail because I think it had a great study design. In this study, trainees performed single leg leg extensions two to three times per week for five weeks. One leg performed the leg extension training only and the other leg performed single leg cycling six hours after resistance training. As we can see in the gray bar, the concurrent training group actually saw slightly superior muscle growth compared with resistance training alone. And lastly, we also have this most recent meta-analysis from 2018, looking at the effects of concurrent high intensity interval training specifically with resistance training on strength and hypertrophy outcomes. As we can see here, there was no significant effect of concurrent training on hypertrophy outcomes, although interval training did seem to have a slight impact on lower body strength. However, there was also no impact on upper body strength. So all this research taken together is a little bit conflicting. For the most part, it seems that although strength gains may be inhibited with cardio training, hypertrophy outcomes don't really seem to be affected and may even be more hypertrophic, at least for less advanced lifters. We also need to be careful interpreting this research because most of it is on untrained or not very highly trained lifters. As we now know, cardio training itself can be hypertrophic in untrained individuals, so maybe the interference effect is not present in these populations, but could be more of an issue in more advanced lifters. Something worth mentioning before we move on is that the interference effect is only a concern for the muscles we are training. Because most cardio modalities primarily involve the lower body, it will only really be a concern for lower body strength and hypertrophy, not the upper body. Now that we have covered how cardio may impact hypertrophy directly, let's now cover what indirect effects it may have. There are two primary concerns I can think of which could potentially inhibit muscle growth. Let's now cover what they are. The first is the time and effort being dedicated to cardio training. There is only a finite amount of time and effort we can put into training each week and performing cardio uses some of this resource. So if trainees spend too much time doing cardio, it may detract away from time and effort spent weight training in the gym. This means we could have performed more volume or put more effort into resistance training, which could have resulted in greater muscle growth. However, if trainees can manage to perform cardio in addition to their usual resistance training routine, then this shouldn't be a concern. So for trainees only lifting a few times per week, this may not be an issue, but for more serious lifters who want to maximize muscle growth, this may be a bigger concern. And the other potential concern is the systemic fatigue cost of cardio training. Endurance training can be a highly fatiguing form of exercise and takes a toll on our central systems. There is only a finite amount of total stress we can handle each week, and cardio is something which adds to this. Once again, this results in a similar issue to the previous. Instead of doing cardio, we could spend our finite systemic capacity doing more resistance training, which will likely result in greater muscle growth. So it is not entirely clear if the interference effect actually applies to hypertrophy. However, it is certainly plausible for cardio to negatively affect muscle growth, especially in more advanced lifters. If this does occur, there are some strategies we can implement to minimize the interference effect so that we mitigate these negative effects. Let's now cover how we can do this. 
The first factor to mention is the volume and intensity of cardio training. Like we mentioned in our working definition, cardio refers to training that has the intention to improve endurance performance. This means that it only really refers to higher volume and higher intensity cardio training as opposed to more casual cardio modalities. So the interference effect is only really observed when we implement actual endurance training. If we just perform a brief walk or a casual cycle, it is not going to have any negative consequences. So if hypertrophy is the primary goal, it may be wise to ensure our cardio work is low intensity, making it more like active movement as opposed to endurance style training. And another strategy to minimize the interference effect is the timing of our resistance and cardio training. The interference effect seems to be more pronounced when performing both training types in close succession with each other. Rather, we would want to separate lifting and cardio by at least a few hours and if possible performed on different days. Furthermore, if trainees do have to perform lifting and cardio on the same day or even in the same session, resistance training should be performed first to ensure a high quality training session. Once again, we should remember that this is only the case for the muscles being trained in the cardio modality. It would be completely fine to perform cycling or running immediately after an upper body resistance training session. So what practical recommendations can we conclude from all of this information? Well, although cardio seems to impede strength gains, it doesn't seem to have much, if any, impact on hypertrophy adaptations. However, most of the research conducted is on untrained or less advanced trainees, so we still don't know if this is also the case for highly advanced lifters. Either way, the interference effect seems to be less prevalent for hypertrophy compared with other anaerobic performance adaptations. However, to be safe, we can strategically perform our cardio in a way that will mitigate or even completely alleviate any potential negative effects on muscle growth. Trainees are probably best off performing low intensity cardio modalities that aren't intended to elicit endurance adaptations. Furthermore, trainees can time their cardio strategically around their lifting sessions to minimize any interference. More specifically, trainees should avoid performing running or cycling immediately after leg training, and if possible, separate this cardio on different days. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks, and more.